After the death of Lumumba, the circumstances surrounding his demise were shrouded in questions for years. The fact that he had been killed definitely did not go unnoticed, as we can see in the following video. Arrest, ill treatment, imprisonment, death. Such was the fate of Patrice Lumumba. And it has been the signal for violent reactions in many parts of the world. First in the United Nations itself, where a Security Council meeting was violently interrupted. This was the scene in Belgrade, where a crowd estimated at 150,000 people marched through the streets. In Paris, the Federation of African Students demonstrated near the Belgian Embassy. They said it was to show their concern over events in Africa and to express their mourning at the death of Lumumba. Finally, reaction in Cairo. Carrying Lumumba's picture, a large crowd marched to the Belgian Embassy. What happened to his body after the killing, however, was a mystery for decades. Until... This book was published. The Assassination of Lumumba, a book by Ludo de Witte. This book revealed the complicity of Belgium and the U.S. and was the catalyzer for an interview with Gerard Soute. Gerard Soute was ordered to get rid of the bodies of Lumumba, Maurice Mpolo, and Joseph Okito, the two friends that were murdered with the Lumumba. Gerard Soute agreed to an interview with the TV program Histories, or Histories, in 1999, and explained how he had gotten rid of the body. He had been instructed that nothing was to be left of the bodies of Lumumba and his friends, and was given sulfuric acid to dissolve the bodies. There were not supposed to be any remains, yet Suta had taken a number of pieces of Lumumba with him. In the interview, Histories, he showed them the bullet that had gone through Lumumba's body. In 2000, on a German TV channel called ARD, he held an interview in which he showed them the tooth that he had taken from Lumumba's corpse. According to both interviewers, Suta was glad for the chance to talk to them, and he was surprised no one had come to him sooner. What may explain this surprise is the fact that in 1978, Gerard Suta, who was also the author of several books, wrote a book called The Arena, The Mort of Lumumba, or The Arena, The Assassination of Lumumba. He later said that this indeed was autobiographical, and he himself was one of the two Europeans that he refers to in this book. The book depicts in detail the events of that night. In the next fragment, I will read an English translation of an excerpt of this book. I have to warn you, it is quite gruesome. So instead of directly going to this fragment, you will first see a warning sign so that you are able to skip this bit if you want to. Twenty meters from the road, at the place of execution in the middle of wooded savannah, the stiff hand of the prophet rises towards the sky, a last attempt to accuse, to call upon his destructive troops. They still can't kill decently. They do not think of the corpse that remains after the destruction of the human being. As soon as they put the bodies near the empty barrels and assemble their equipment, they realize that they are not prepared for that kind of job. They go back to the car and drink whiskey. Unused to this task, they start by hacking the bodies to pieces like maniacs. This gets them nowhere, except into stink and filth, and they decide to tie towels round their mouths. Schaffer grabs the hacksaw on the prophet's legs and starts sawing just above the knee as if it were the branch of a tree. He delicately places the piece of the leg at the bottom of the barrel and continues separating the limbs from the torso one by one. When he is left with only the torso and the head, he suddenly realizes the horror of what he is doing. When he is left with only the torso and the head, he suddenly realizes the horror of what he is doing. Dennis keeps as still as a stone statue holding a torch to light the scene. It is Schaefer who awakens his hatred. Passion mixes with his drunkenness. His fingers grab the metallic fuzzy hair firmly. This is the decisive gesture. He puts the saw aside. It is no match for this monstrous head. He takes the axe, puts his foot on the jaw and splits the neck. He is out of breath. He swears profusely cursing everybody like the brothers of his race. I'm doing this instead of you, you white cowards. It is a grating oath spat out between clenched teeth through the cotton wool of the sanitary towel. Suddenly, gripped by an immense repugnance, he curses all the nationalist prophets with goatees and big glasses, all his own country's fops with silk hats and false promises. With the ferocity of hatred, he delivers the 
axe blow that separates the last vertebrae from the neck, takes the stinking head in his hands and spits on it. Then, his head resting on his crossed arms, he sits in the liquid soiling the grass and begins to sob. Beside him, the limbless torso. At his feet is the head, an impossible object. Here is the only material proof of the prophet's death. If a cult or martyrdom ever appeared, he could provide it with relics. He takes some pincers out of the tool bag and extricates with difficulty two gold teeth from the prophet's upper jaw. Dentists can identify unrecognizable corpses by the prosthesis. He takes the right arm out of the barrel and cuts two fingers from the stiff hand. The index finger has a bullet hole where the hand tried to protect the body. The index finger, which had issued so many threats, which had shown the excited masses the way to destruction, to death and to his own end, and the little finger with a long nail which he used to clean his nose and ears with while in prison. He envelops the relics in a clean cloth, bends over to where a bullet has fallen out of the corpse onto the ground, adds it to the evidence and puts it all in his pocket. He picks up the torso, puts it in the barrel on top of the limbs and lays the head over it. He opens one of the demijohns and pours the content on the dismembered body. A column of gas, white and whistling, rises to the sky. The acid turns the prophet into a mass of mucus. Gerard Sousa passed away in 2000, but the book by Ludo de Witte and the revelations that came with it did lead to an investigation into the responsibility of the Belgian government and in 2002, the government for Hofstadt apologized for the death of Lumumba, saying that the Belgian government had a moral responsibility. Official apologies for other misdeeds, like those of Leopold II, have not been made to this day. The story does not end here. Because the tooth was still in possession of a Sutta, Gerard Sutta had passed away, but the tooth had gone on to his daughter. In 2016, the Flemish tabloid Humo held an interview with her, and in this interview, she showed the tooth. When Ludo de Witte, the author of the assassination of Lumumba, saw this interview, he filed a complaint. And after this complaint, Suta's daughter's house was searched, and bullets and one gold tooth were taken from her. Here I would like to draw a quick parallel. Remember Ruff de Bouver? His house was searched after he published his fictional book about the bronze hand of the statue, and he had to file a complaint for the search to end. Now, here, nothing was searched until a complaint was filed, not even after the publication of the non-fiction book and the admittance of Suta on TV. Currently, these confiscated items are kept in the Palace of Justice in Belgium. The Palace of Justice. Perhaps a little ironic. The Belgian TV show Convas has made a documentary series called Children of the Colony, and one of the people interviewed is the daughter of Patrice Lumumba, Juliana Lumumba. Unfortunately, this series is only available to people from Belgium. I think this is a terrible shame because it is an informative series, and I think it should be freely available to all. What I can show you is a picture of Juliana Lumumba and read to you one of the things she said regarding this tooth. I am still waiting for an appropriate response. A murder without a murderer. A murder without a prosecuted. A murder without a body. But a Belgian does have a tooth of that body. We have a right to demand justice for what was done to my father. I do think it would be just to return a daughter the only remains of her father. I would also like to show the reply of Sapin Makengela, the artist of the painting, when I asked him what he thought about the tooth being in the Palace of Justice in Belgium. Je me sens énervé. Mais attends. Parfois, quand je mets la vidéo de cet homme, de monsieur belge, dans YouTube ou bien dans n'importe quelle vidéo, avec l'arrogance qu'il parle, sur comment il avait arraché les dents de Lumumba, ça me révolte. Quoi. Ça me révolte, ça me... je me demande, mais comment la personne comme ça, malgré il est vieux, je ne sais pas si, je pense qu'il est déjà décédé, mais comment on pouvait le laisser tranquillement faire des témoignages choquants 
Il pouvait écrire ça même dans des papiers, sur des papiers que les gens lisent, mais dans des vidéos comme ça. Et la justice internationale, internationale ils sont là, ils n'ont rien fait sur cet homme. Et de l'autre la part, de, de part, les Congolais ils sont restés calmes, sans même aller chercher cet homme pour bien parler avec lui, ne fût-ce que de lui demander de faire quelque chose officiellement, de remettre ses dents. Et la justice belge, quand on les acquise qu'ils étaient impliqués à la mort de Lumumba, ils ignorent ça tout le temps, mais les compatriotes belges témoignent des choses comme ça. Et... Mais non, attends, c'est choquant. Est-ce que cet homme-là, quand il parlait, il ne pensait pas que... Dans nos jours ici, il y aura à voir déjà les petits-fils de Lumumba qui regardent cette vidéo très choquante sur leur grand-père qu'on a et qu'ils n'ont jamais vu. Bon, je ne comprends pas quoi. Ça me bouleverse trop, ça. Je me mets vraiment à la place de tout, à la place de, de, de Congolais, à la place d'un de, de, de fils de Lumumba, à la place du papa de Lumumba, de la mère de Lumumba. Donc. Ça, ça me révolte, mais nous sommes aujourd'hui dans un, dans un monde pacifique. On essaie d'amener les choses raisonnablement. Mais je pense vraiment un jour, si les Congolais seront courageux, on doit faire des démarches en toutes sortes, qu'on récupère les fils et ces dents-là, qu'on donne ça de valeur pour enseigner la population congolaise et, du valeur de Lumumba. Car l'histoire de Lumumba, c'est une histoire... Qui, ne prenons, qui, qui, va, qui va jamais prendre la fin. In this interview, we can clearly see his dismay. Since the tooth has still not been returned to its country of origin, I do believe it is important to continue bringing attention to both Lumumba and his tooth. And this is also something that is, at least to an extent, being done. For this, I would like to take you to the last of the three unsilencing objectives, namely that of 